Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about the treatment of hypothyroidism. In my previous video on hypothyroidism, I discussed the clinical presentation, the diagnosis of hypothyroidism in detail. In this video, we are going to talk about the treatment. Coming to the treatment of hypothyroidism. In the treatment of hypothyroidism, you have to replace the thyroid hormones because in hypothyroidism, there is thyroid hormone deficiency. You have to replace the thyroid hormones. Now, there are two types of thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Normally, levothyroxine, which is a synthetic form of T4, is used for the replacement. It is the first choice therapy for the treatment of hypothyroidism. It is uh, T4 is peripherally converted to the active form that is T3. Leothyronine is a synthetic form of T3. But remember, leothyronine is not used for the treatment of hypothyroidism except in certain specific cases like patients with Mexedema coma. In patients with Mexedema coma, leothyronine is used but otherwise leothyronine is not used. Why leothyronine is not used? That is a very important question because leothyronine has a very short half-life and you have to give uh, a repeated dosages of leothyronine throughout the day to supplement the patient with the thyroid hormones while on the other hand levothyroxine has a long half-life therefore one time supplementation only once patient takes the tablet and for the next 24 hour patients has the thyroid hormone in the body but leothyronine has short half-life but why in mixed coma are we giving leothyronine because in mixed coma as we said the t4 is converted to T3 in the peripheral tissues and T3 is the more active form in the tissues. In mixed coma, the patient's uh, the basic hormones and basic enzymes that convert T4 to T3 are deficient. In mixed coma, there is deficiency of the enzymes that convert T4 to T3 into the active form. So, acutely for the mixed coma, for the acute emergency, you give leothyronine. Remember, over-treatment with thyroid hormones can lead to cardiac arrhythmias and osteoporosis. It's a very high yield point. Always in patients with hypothyroidism, you have to look that whether there is any cardiovascular risk factor, if the patient is having any ischemic heart disease, any cardiovascular history, any heart failure, that patient is at increased risk because uh, uh, as we said that thyroid hormones are basically fuel of the body and they work, they make the machinery work. When you give thyroid hormones to these patients with ischemic heart disease patients and that thyroid hormone dose is not adjusted for the heart failure, these patients can develop arrhythmias and they can die of the arrhythmias. So you have to adjust the dose in these patients and reduce dose is given. Thyroid hormones all can also cause osteoporosis. If the patient is having overt hypothyroidism with elevated TSH, low T4, and patient is a young healthy male or female if the patient is young the patient is healthy you can give full dose leothyroxine and give replacement for the thyroid hormones and as soon as you start the leothyroxine therapy uh, after a week or so patients reports improvement in the symptoms dose is 1.6 microgram per kg per orally once daily per kg you give 1.6 microgram now, uh, levothyroxine comes in the form of Thyronom and many other brands and they are in the formulation of 25 microgram, 50 microgram, 75 microgram and even 100 microgram. So, once daily dosage is given to the patients that are young and healthy and 1.6 microgram per kg is given. You tell the patient to come back in 4 to 8 weeks and then you repeat the TSH levels. You tell the patient to come back in 4 to 8 weeks, the patient comes back to you and you perform the TSH levels. According to the TSH levels, you titrate the dose of levothyroxine. If the TSH levels is still high, it means that your dose is insufficient and you have to increase the dose. So, if the TSH levels are high, you have to increase the dose. If the TSH levels are low, it means that you have given increased dose of thyroid hormones to that patient and you have to decrease the levothyroxine dose because the TSH is suppressed. The TSH should be in the normal ranges. So, you have to decrease the dose if the TSH is low. Now, how much will you have to reduce and increase the dose? You increase it by stepwise. Every 4 to 8 weeks, what you can do is that you can increase it from 12.5 microgram to 25 microgram. Now, let's say if the patient was on 50 microgram, you can increase the dose 
to uh, 75 microgram or what you can do is that you can ask the patient to take a 25 microgram tablet and make it uh, break it into half and take the half tablet so that is how you can increase the dose you increase it stepwise you increase it from 12.5 to 25 microgram now when you have changed the dose you ask the patient to come back in four to six months now the initial visit was in four to six weeks but when you have changed the dose you ask you take you give certain time to the patient and you ask the patient to come back in four months after four months you repeat the tsh level you repeat the tsh level and if the tsh target is achieved then you ask the patient to follow up annually if the tsh target is yet not achieved then you can increase the dose or decrease the dose stepwise 12.5 to 25 microgram now levothyroxine is a very sensitive drug its absorption is reduced if it is not taken appropriately so what you do is that you ask the patient to take levothyroxine separately from all other drugs like if levothyroxine is to be taken at a certain point in time if the patient takes it in morning the patient does not take any other drug with it you ask the patient to take it on empty stomach 30 to 60 minutes before the breakfast and take it separately from all other interfering drugs other interfering drugs include PPIs that are also taken before the breakfast. So you have to tell the patient to separate the time from these and PPIs, calcium salts, ferrous sulfate, bile acid sequestrant, they decrease the absorption of uh, levothyroxine. So levothyroxine uh, will become ineffective and in the follow-up visits, it's very important that you check that whether the patient needs dose increase most of the time patients are not taking levothyroxine properly many of many times you would see that the patients are taking levothyroxine after their breakfast or after their lunch so that is totally ineffective so you do not need to increase the dose of levothyroxine you just need to see that whether that patient is taking levothyroxine properly or not so glucocorticoids can also interfere with levothyroxine metabolism so usually in patients that are uh, on chronic glucocorticoids like patients uh, with Edison's disease, patients with Sheehan syndrome that also have hypothyroidism with uh, uh, Edison's, these patients are taking glucocorticoids and glucocorticoids in metabolize, increase the metabolism of levothyroxine and uh, higher doses are usually needed in patients if the patient is already taking glucocorticoid with it. If you are parenterally treating like in patients with uh, uh, emergencies, like mixed edema coma in these patients 70 to 75 percent of oral dose iv is given or if the patient is admitted to you and patient cannot take orally or if the patient is on ventilator now in these patients oral uh, 70 to 75 percent of the oral dose is given iv now if the patient is having pre-existing coronary artery disease so these are very high risk patients and in these high risk patients you have to reduce uh, the starting dose you have to start from a lower doses because these patients there is increased risk of arrhythmia so you always screen that whether the patient is having any osteoporosis whether the patient is having any coronary artery disease because there is increased risk of arrhythmias in these patients the dose initial starting dose is usually 12.5 to 25 microgram per olive orally once daily and you monitor these patients now coming to pregnancy and hypothyroidism remember if a female wants to become pregnant and that patient is a diagnosed case of hypothyroidism remember to increase the dose of thyroid hormone increase the dose of levothyroxine when you see that that patient is pregnant as soon as you know that that patient is pregnant you should increase the dose of levothyroxine because levothyroxine is very important for the brain development of the fetus if you do not give levothyroxine if you do not increase the dose of levothyroxine in this hypothyroid patient that has become pregnant the child will be retarded the child would have intellectual disability the brain development will not take place so you have to increase the dose patient should increase the levothyroxine dose by two extra doses per week as soon as the pregnancy is suspected alternatively the daily dose can also be increased by 25 to 30 percent or they can take two extra doses per week as soon as the pregnancy is suspected so you have to increase the dose because brain development of the child needs levothyroxine TSH and free T4 levels should be monitored once a month during the first half of the pregnancy and then at the 30th week. Hypothyroidism adversely affects the fetal nervous system. That's a very important point because it is a commonly tested point in the exams. They would ask you that what is the effect of uh, hypothyroidism on the fetal brain? It decreases the development of fetal nervous system.
Now coming to the treatment of subclinical hypothyroidism. In subclinical hypothyroidism, as we discussed that subclinical hypothyroidism, the TSH levels are elevated but the T3, T4 levels are normal. It occurs because in the initial stages when the patient's uh, thyroid gland is shutting down, the pituitary produces increased TSH and it pushes the uh, thyroid gland to produce normal amounts of thyroid hormones. So it's actually the pituitary gland that is pushing and making the thyroid gland work and produce normal amounts of thyroid hormones. And if this pituitary does not produce increased TSH, that person would go into overt hypothyroidism. So that is called as subclinical hypothyroidism where the pituitary has to work more to produce a normal amount of thyroid hormones from the thyroid gland. But ultimately, this patient will go into overt hypothyroidism. So what you do is that you ask these patients to come back in four to six weeks and then you repeat the uh, uh, TSH levels. If the TSH levels are greater than or equal to 10 milli international unit per liter to treat these patients or if the TSH level is less than 10 but with that patient is also having any cardiac risk factor or if the patient is planning to go into surgery or if the patient is having positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies in these patients in these patients with subclinical hypothyroidism, you have to treat these patients and you have to start the reduced starting dose. You have to start from 20, uh, 25 to 50 microgram per orally once daily because if sub, this subclinical hypothyroidism is not treated, this patient will eventually develop overt hypothyroidism. So the first step is that you follow up these patients in 4 to 6 weeks and you check the TSH level. If the TSH level is becoming normal it's fine they don't need treatment if the tsh level is rising greater than 10 straight away treat less than 10 with these risk factors cardiac uh, pregnancy and positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies treat these patients with a reduced starting dose misuse of thyroid hormones for the weight loss is very common in healthcare workers because these levothyroxines they cause weight loss it's very common that these are misused for the uh, weight loss but remember, you might have seen it many times, many ads on internet that there is some specific herbal drug and Ayurvedic drug that cause magical weight loss and within months patient can get weight loss. So these are basically these thyroid hormones that are prescribed and labeled as uh, some herbal drug and that herbal drug is very magical and that can cause weight loss. These are basically these thyroid hormones. Reasons for treatment failure are non-adherence, very common and malabsorption. They don't know how to take the levothyroxine tablet. So, it's very important to guide these patients. Now, coming to congenital hypothyroidism. Congenital hypothyroidism is a very important topic and highly tested topic on exams. Remember the seven P's of congenital hypothyroidism. As we said in pregnancy, there is increased demand of thyroid hormones. You need to increase the dose. If the dose is not increased or if the patient is hypothyroid, the patient, uh, the uh, fetus will have fought belly. The patient will be pale. The seven P's, puffy face, protruding umbilicus, protruding tongue, poor brain development and prolonged neonatal jaundice. It's very common that they would give you a scenario that patient has a uh, protruding umbilicus and the patient has prolonged neonatal jaundice with a protuberant tongue. Now, these are some features that don't that, that are not very simple to diagnose that this patient might be having hypothyroidism. But remember, these three are very common points that are given as a hint that a patient is actually having uh, congenital hypothyroidism. So, protruding umbilicus, protruding tongue, and prolonged neonatal jaundice. These are commonly tested points on exams. This is the patient. Look at the big tongue, look at the puffy face, look at the pallor, look at the protuberant belly. So this is a picture showing congenital hypothyroidism. What are the complications of hypothyroidism? Mixed edema coma. Many times these patients would develop a small illness, a small UTI, a small respiratory infection and they would develop mixed edema encephalopathy and they would be comatose. And they, there will be severe deficiency of uh, thyroid, thyroid hormones in their body. So, mixed edema coma is a big complication and I have made a separate video on mixed edema coma. You can check out the video. Give, the link is given in the description below. Primary thyroid lymphoma, especially in Hashimoto thyroiditis and increased risk of death due to cardiovascular problems because uh, these thyroid hormones, uh, in hypothyroidism, there is hypercholesterolemia. Before going to the summary, if you like my video, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you.
we talked about levothyroxine which is basically the t4 it has long half life commonly prescribed drug one oral dosage levothyronine only in mixed edema coma short half life levothyroxine dose in healthy patient 1.6 microgram per kg follow up in 4 to 8 weeks if the tsh is still high increase the dose if low decrease the dose dose change follow up in 4 to 6 months if the dose is achieved review annually with tsh levels how to take levothyroxine before the breakfast don't take it with other medications and Patients who are uh, uh, planning to get pregnant by the first sign of pregnancy increase the dose of levothyroxine. Misuse of thyroid hormones for the weight loss is very common. Reasons of treatment failure, non-adherence being the most common one. Congenital hypothyroidism, protuberant belly, protuberant umbilicus, tongue and prolonged neonatal jaundice. Complications of hypothyroidism, myxedema coma being the most common one. If you like my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on endocrinology lectures, emergency medicine lectures and ECG lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.